Okay, so full transparency on this one. I really didn't know what I was doing. And I'm not just talking about getting engaged. I mean this whole build, which meant every step of this build would be experimentation and a bit of hope that each step worked out so I didn't mess things up and ruin everything. In reality, I should have just made a second one in tandem in case I messed up. Whatever. I started with a few scrap pieces of maple and ebay wood. I like these as materials as they were very different in color and look so the woods would stand out very well if my vision came together how I saw it. The ipe was a bit rough so as you saw before I lightly sanded it down and then cut it into two pieces saving the second piece for later on in the build. I then glued all three pieces together and let it cure overnight. Now I thought that a cool way to make a box would be in the same vein that you make an end grain cutting board. Laminate a few strips together to form a larger piece, then plane them down, cut them up, and then glue them together again to form a block. So I went and did that. I wanted my box to have a specific design, so what I did was measure the thickness of the piece I planed down to, and then translated that to one of the sides of maple. Then I could cut off that strip on the miter saw making one side longer than the other. I then set up a stop and cut my piece into four smaller strips, around two and a quarter inches. Remember that second piece I cut earlier? I cut that up as well in two and a half inch strips. Next I can make the box, and you can see how it was going to shape out. I ended up not needing everything I cut, but always good to have spares. And I probably could have glued them up in multiple steps, but whatever, I had a deadline to hit. Once it was dried, I was left with a crappy looking block, so I set up my stationary sander to smooth everything down. And one thing I don't show but want to stress is the importance of keeping everything square. So I was very careful to keep my platform at 90 degrees to the sander as well as my miter gauge so that when it was sanded down, everything was 90 degrees and square. And after a few minutes and careful passes, I ended up with a pretty clean looking block. Now I don't have a router table, so I flipped my router upside down and took light passes using a quarter inch chamfer bit to give the top a cool profile. This probably isn't the safest method, but I was very careful in doing so. I had seen a few YouTube videos where this process worked and the result looked good. I also then lightly sanded up to 220 grit on all of my surfaces after. Next up was forming a true box with a base and a lid. So I clamped up my block to my miter box and begun sawing the piece in half. And who am I kidding, after about 8 seconds of sawing and realizing I'd maybe never actually finish this project if I kept up this method, I switched to a sawzall that worked much better but left a pretty ugly cut. Nothing a little hard sanding can't fix. Next up was making a hole. So originally I wanted to use a Forstner bit, but I don't have one. And instead I devised a plan to create a routing jig. I took scrap pieces of 2x4s and cut them so that they could be tightly mounted around the box using just pocket hole screws. Then I can make the corners of my hole, which was 1cm in on all sides. Using a 1 8 inch flush trim bit, I could move my router to all four corners using the base plate of the router as a reference to create a border for the router. Then after squaring up all the sides, I cut up a few scrap pieces and then attached them to the flat base with finish nails, thus creating a pretty efficient little jig. I was happy with how it came out. Next was the moment of truth. 
I think I ended up doing seven or eight total passes on this, moving the depth down about an eighth of an inch at a time, and it worked really well. I also ended up doing a single router pass on the lid off camera. And just a bit of fine sandpaper to take down those rough edges. The hinge on this thing was surprisingly one of the most difficult parts. I considered using the parts of a throwaway cheap ring box I could get at the store, but those were actually a lot harder to translate over to my build than you'd think. I ended up using 5mm barrel hinges that I could only find online. I marked four very precise holes using my digital caliper, and after doing a test on a scrap piece of wood, I very carefully and slowly drilled all four of my pilot holes. Again, didn't want to mess anything up. After that, I needed to chamfer a 45 degree angle on the back end of the top of my bottom piece. And this is going to be necessary to allow these tiny hinges to flex. Just like this. Then I could assemble everything with a bit of super glue. Now this stuff dries really quickly so make sure you have everything close by when doing so and you don't need to use much either. For drying, let the box sit close so you know that when it does dry, it will close properly. Just don't glue the two halves together. Now for the pillow, I'm using a piece of packing foam. And what I did was cut it to width of the box and then rolled it up into a cylinder and glued it together. I then repeated the same process with some black fake leather that I had purchased and rolled it up around the foam, again attaching it using super glue. And to make the final pillow, I did this twice, giving me two sushi roll looking pillows that would hold the ring just by pressure. And before installing them, I finished the box using a bit of tongue oil. It was subtle, but it made the grain pop a bit and gave the box a nice shine. Then, using a bit of force and the pointy end of a pair of scissors, I could push in the pillows and smooth out the leather cushion to make it look nice. And after weeks of secret work, I was finally done. And so ready to not keep this thing a secret anymore. Hope you guys enjoy the build. 